Hey guys, welcome back to Harrison Hacks. Today we're going to be following our step-by-step -step guide to RetroArch. And in this one I want to focus on multi-disc games, how to add them into your playlist, as well as how to utilize the change disc feature within RetroArch. So the first thing we're going to need is some ROMs. So I'll open this up. I'm using PSX in this example. So I've got Final Fantasy 7, Disc 1, 2, and 3. I'm using CHD files, but if you're using BinQ, I will also show you how to do this as well. It's pretty much the same process. So what we're going to want to do in our ROMs folder right now is right-click, New, Text Document. And I want to name this the same as my game, so the No Intro Naming Convention. So what I'm going to do is just leave out the disk part. So I've got Final Fantasy 7 bracket USA bracket. I'm going to right click, copy, and then we're going to rename our text file, paste. Just like that. The next thing we want to do is copy our whole name including our either chd or .q, whichever whichever file you're using. We're going to want to copy all of that and we're going to open up our text document. We're going to right click, paste. Now what I like to do is just hit enter, right click, paste, and then enter one more time since we have three disks, paste, and then we will change the name of disk 2 and disk 3. File, save, close. Now what we're going to want to do is rename our .txt, so go all the way to the end, delete txt and put m3u. If you change a file name extension, the file might become unusable. Are you sure you want to change it? Yes. Perfect. So now we're going to put these into a new folder. So I'm going to highlight my three disks and my M3U file. Right click, cut or copy. Go into your RetroArch folder. Come down to ROMs. And we are going to need a new folder. Right click, new folder. I'm going to name mine PSX. We're going to go into our PSX folder, right click, paste. And there we go. So let's launch up RetroArch. Okay, so here we are in RetroArch. And the first thing we're going to want to do is go to Online Updater, Core Downloader. And we're going to scroll on down to Sony PlayStation. So you have a few options here. Um, I usually just get all of them. Now for this one, I'm just going to use PC SX Rearmed. But we'll go back, we'll go back. And now what we're going to want to do is import content, manual scan, content directory. We're in our ROMs folder, so we'll just go into PSX and hit scan this directory. System name. Go down till we find Sony PlayStation. here and the default core it's completely up to you I'm going to use PC SX rearmed now my file extensions are CHDs but I could even go like this I can do m3u hit enter and then we're going to start scan. Let's go back. Sony PlayStation. We have Final Fantasy. So if we hit Final Fantasy, 
Now what we can do, you can see that I already have my thumbnail, but you can hit download thumbnails and then yours will populate. And we could run the game right now if we want. So you can see no PlayStation BIOS file found. So it's just using an HLE BIOS, um, but you get better compatibility if you get original BIOSes. But you can see the game running there. So I'm gonna close content and we're gonna exit RetroArch and then I'm gonna show you how to get the BIOS files. Well, I can't link you to them, um, but you know, this might help. If you were to type that into your browser, you might get this file right here and um, you would might wanna save that to your computer. Wink, wink. But once you have that file, which is a zip file. I unzipped it. Here's all the files that were inside. So what I do is I take all the files that were in that zip file, cut. I'm gonna go into my RetroArch folder. We're gonna go to our system folder and paste them right in the root of system. So now we have those. So now we'll go down launch RetroArch. So now that we're back in RetroArch, we can go down to PlayStation, Final Fantasy 7, run. No more BIOS issues. It's telling us we were on disk one. So the game's no problem. If you were to complete game one and it says to change disks, you'd want to go into your RetroArch menu. I'm using keyboard, so F1. You would go to disk control, eject your disk. Now current disk index. So we are on disk one. So we'll just click there. We can go to disk two, insert disk. Here we are. That's how you would change disks inside of RetroArch. If you want to, you have some core options. System, you can change your region to NTSC or PAL. I leave mine on auto. Your bias selection, auto or HLE. Do you want to show the bias boot logo? it will reduce game compatibility. You can do a second memory card, which is shared across all games. So you got some options there. If you come down, you have compatibility fixes. So if you're having any issues with certain games not playing, you can go ahead and check these out. But uh, that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Really appreciate you watching. Please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, most importantly, have a good day.